Hey, it's Rich, the Louisiana Hobby Guy, and today you are watching Lightburn for Noobs, and we are gonna we're doing quick videos on hidden features or features you may not know about. Today is episode number two: three ways to create a cut layer for an image or a graphic. And this is going to be a quick tutorial today with a little bonus at the end. So here we go. Let's jump into Lightburn and find out three different ways to engrave your photo or your graphic and then create a cut layer to cut it out as well. Let's go. I want to explain the different types of images that you might encounter. So the very first one that you see over here is going to be a photograph. This one happens to be a JPEG image. You might have a, a BMP or any other type of image that comes from your camera, your cell phone camera, whatever it might be. These are really simple because they have defined edges. So this one is a defined square. If we look up here, you'll see that it's 214.390 by the same. All we have to do for this one is create a rectangle that's about the same size. So we'll just start from here and we'll drag all the way over to the other corner where it locked in. And you'll see that if we select that now, it is the same size as the image. And as long as it's on another layer, so I have this right now on the cut layer, we will now engrave. Here's the image up here. It'll engrave that image and then cut it out. But what if you have a different type of graphic? So here are two other types of graphics. This one here is a portable network graphic, and that is a PNG file. This one over here is a vector graphic, and a lot of people get confused between what is a vector and what is a raster. So a vector file is basically any type of line art. And you can see that this is just basic line art. Then you have what's called a raster graphic, which would be something like clip art that you would get from the internet. Um, the difference is that this one is just lines, whereas the one that you get in clip art is going to have pixels. This vector graphic here can be scaled to any size without losing resolution, whereas a raster cannot. Then we've got the third kind over here, which is the portable network graphic or PNG file. So this is something that I designed myself. And this one, although it looks like it has a defined edge of a circle, it does not. If I select this, you'll see that this also has the defined edge of a square. And we cannot just simply trace this uh, and get the perfect output. So on any of these, we could trace it. So let me go back to the graphic over here. You've seen one way by creating that square around the photograph. Let's look at the second way. So we'll select the graphic, then we'll right click on it, and we'll come down here to trace image. And you'll see it's not a great trace, but the only thing we want to trace is the boundary. So let's just grab this threshold slider right here and slide this all the way to the end, which will give us just the boundary. And we don't want to delete the image after the trace. So if we say OK to that, we now have that same thing that we got by drawing it out by hand on that JPEG image. On this PNG image, it's slightly different. So on any other type of image besides a JPEG or a photograph, let's put it that way, a photograph, we're going to have to right select it, right click on it, go to trace image, and you'll see if there's all this noise in here, we don't want it. If we start sliding this up, it sort of gets there when we get to the end, but there's still some noise in there. So on this one, it's very simple. With the PNG file, all you have to do is come right here to trace transparency, turn that one on and click OK. Now you'll see all of that noise went away. We click OK and we have a perfect circle that lines up perfectly with our graphic. 
Now this has to be on another layer different than this PNG. So the PNG is on the image layer. This is on the red layer and that layer has to be set to line. If you set it to fill, this is not going to work. So we'll go ahead and set that to line and we are now finished with that. And now let me show you the third way that you can do this and you can do it on any file. But when you have a circle file like this, when you come over here all the way to the right side, you want to get in the center. So let's go ahead and find out where the center is. I'm going to come way off to the side, way over here where you see that 254. I'm going to click and I'm going to drag to the middle right there. So there is the middle of our file. Then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to click and I'm going to drag another guideline down to the middle of our file over here. And now you see we have this all centered up here. We could go ahead and do some perfect centering on this by clicking on the line, selecting the line only, and then coming over here and selecting the graphic and then coming up to the top and we can align these objects horizontally to get it perfectly aligned. Then we could do the same thing on this side, select that line, then come over here, hold shift, select the graphic, and we can go ahead and align these vertically like that. So now we know they're perfectly aligned in the middle. These are just tool paths, and that is the middle. So the second way to do this, or another way to do this, which you might have an odd graphic here, only thing you want to do is find the middle first, come over here to the pencil tool, grab that line tool, zoom way in over here, find the beginning of the edge of this graphic, click right there, and now we have a line. Now we'll zoom out, come to the top, and we'll click right there, and there is our second line. Come over here, click right here, and I'm using my mouse wheel to move the screen. Press down on the mouse wheel and move. Then we'll come down to the bottom right here. That's the third line. And now all we have to do is close it. So we'll come up here until this is closed, which is right about there. That looks like a close, and it is. And if you did this right, the pencil tool has now gone away. So now we have those four lines. We can come over here to Cuts and Layers, and we can get rid of this tool layer here just by coming over here and hitting the garbage pail and saying yes. Now those tool layers are gone. Let's go ahead and fade this image by uh, turning off the output. And now you can see we have those four lines. So let's go to Node Edit now. And let's zoom in and select this. And you'll see that we have exactly four nodes here. So what we can do is come up to this node Hit the S, and the reason I'm showing you this is if you have an odd shape. Come up to this one, hit the S on that one, hit the S on this one, and finally the S on the last one. When you're inserting nodes, you always want a node like this to be in the center, and that's why I use those center crosshairs. Now we can just play with these until we get these in the right spot, just by dragging them out, like you see there. And we'll drag this one out. And again, this is for something that's going to be an odd shape. And there you see, we've now gotten this entire shape. Now, this is not an odd shape, but this is how you would control the shape itself. And let's put this back to where it was. We can now select it. And now we have that line on the outside to cut out that image if we turn the image back on you can see it right there that is the hardest way to do this is that that third one where you have to work with node edit there are three different ways that you can create a cut layer to cut out to engrave first and then cut out your picture or your graphic now let's throw in one quick bonus let's go back to lightburn real real quickly and here is a bonus tip so if you do have a circle, let's get rid of this one, like you see here. All you have to do, or a, a square, you can do it from the corner. All you have to do is grab the ellipse tool over here on the left side, come to the center, 
When you get to the center, hold down shift and click and drag to the other side. And it doesn't matter where you drag it because I'm restraining this circle. So if I come exactly to the other side, I know that now I can let go of my mouse and the shift button. I know that this circle that I just created is going to be the perfect size for this image. So now with the circle selected, I'll hold shift and I'll select the graphic and then I'll come up here to the bullseye tool and hit bullseye. And now we have a perfect circle. And you can do the same thing on a square or a rectangle just by grabbing the rectangle tool and waiting until it turns into a bullseye and then dragging over to the other side where it turns into a bullseye. Now you have the perfect cutout. If we were to click, click the selector tool and look at this light burn graphic here, you'll notice that if we right click on it, there is no trace feature because this is a vector graphic. But if you have a vector, this lights up over here, which is the offset tool. If we click the offset tool and we set the offset tool to zero, the distance like that, and we do outer shapes only, we do not delete the original objects and we'll use round. Now nah, we can use any one we want here. I think I'll stick with the corner and I'll say, okay, now we have this exact same shape. If we put it on another layer, it turns into a cutout. So the layer has to be in line mode and there is our cutout. And if we hold shift, select the vector and then hit bullseye, we now have a perfect cutout for our vector graphic. So that should answer questions about graphics and about pictures and how to create a cutout after you've engraved it. All you need is the two layers, the image layer and the line layer. So I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it for you. And as always, I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Making everything